Uh, Sierra Madre Gold and Silver is an exploration and future development company uh, that is working towards consolidating the area in and around Nayarit, Mexico. Uh, the area of Nayarit is a fair amount of production. Uh, there's a number of private mines, there are mills and precious metals processing facilities. However, no one has really consolidated the area to date, uh, but that's our plan. Our three to five year goal is to have 50 to 100 million ounces of silver in inventory, as well as production from two or three mines, kind of utilizing a centralized um, facility, uh, similar to a hub and spoke mining scenario, something that's modular, which has a lower capex to start, uh, but can grow as more projects come online. With that strategy in mind, uh, we recently announced a really exciting uh, new project and the second one in a portfolio. Um, we acquired the La Tigra project from Grupo Mexico. Uh, La Tigra has been in and out of production for the past 100 years. Uh, the head grade was over 10 grams gold, as well as 350 grams silver, and has never seen a drill hole. Uh, being able to do a deal with Grupo Mexico, a uh, multi-billion dollar international company, uh, is quite a coup for a junior and just goes to show our, the ability of our management team um, and, and some of our relationships to acquire some really high valued projects. Uh, I believe Grupo has only ever done one other project uh, agreement with the junior in the past 10 years. Uh, we have forward looking statements here. Obviously, I've already said a few and I'll continue to say some as well as Greg. Uh, on to management, uh, Greg Liller, uh, he's our CEO and executive chairman. Uh, Greg's been in Mexico since 1993. Uh, he's an exploration geologist by training, but has operated uh, numerous mines. Uh, he's had seven projects actually become mines, which is uh, truly incredible, including uh, a number of successful M&As, one for over three quarters of a billion dollars. Uh, some of the names you'll recognize here, uh, Gammon Lake, which became Gammon Gold, uh, Mex Gold, uh, Genco. Uh, one thing that has been consistent uh, in any of these takeovers has been uh, the company was already in production. Um, hence, why we're looking for production and why we're advancing our projects towards production, and uh, as well with any possible future acquisitions, we are looking for production. Uh, I myself, I come from a capital markets background. I started at Canon Corgenuity. Uh, most recently, I've been on the corporate side of things, uh, working with management teams, finding assets and, and starting new companies. A couple of companies I'm a founder of um, recently, one is Prime Mining, where we started that around 30 cents and it's trading well above $4 a share today. Uh, you'll recognize some similar names associated with Sierra Madre and Prime. And another one uh, that's been in the news quite a bit lately, uh, Millennial Lithium. Uh, Millennial has a definitive uh, bankable feasibility stage lithium brine project in Argentina. Uh, and about a month ago, we announced a uh, all cash bid uh, for a group for over $350 million. Uh, however, a week ago, we announced a competing uh, unsolicited bid for uh, 27 million more than that. So it's actually quite exciting. Uh, but back to the technical team, a couple more people I'll touch on, uh, one being Greg Smith. Uh, Greg has spent the majority of his career in Latin America. Uh, he was CEO of Caliber Mining, and he uh, was CEO during the acquisition of El Limon and La Libertad in Nicaragua. Uh, most recently, uh, another gentleman we added on, Luis Sainz. Uh, Luis came from us from Frisco, where he was subdirector of mines there. Um, you know, Frisco has numerous mines, so he's really comfortable with that strategy of having multiple projects and building out technical teams for each of those projects. Uh, there's two more people I'll quickly touch on. Uh, they're both Mexican nationals. Uh, one is Jorge Ramiro. Um, Jorge lives in Hong Kong now, but he's also CEO and founder of a company called Reina Silver. Uh, Jorge was instrumental in the acquisition of the Tigra for us. And, and finally, Alejandro Caraveo. Alejandro is not only a director of the company, he's also our country manager. He comes from a really well-known Mexican mining family. Uh, he's worked with you know, numerous large companies, Orico, Pan American, Cormani, can name a few. He's based in Chihuahua and he handles all of our, I guess, in-country needs in terms of permitting, uh, working with the local ajitos, environmental, uh, drilling contractors. So it's great to have something like that in-house. We're not relying on any um, you know, contractors outside of uh, our, our team. And with that, so I'll pass you over to our Executive Chairman and Chief Operating Officer, Greg Lillard, to walk you through Topeak, our, our main asset, and as well as the acquisition and why he's excited about La Tigra. Thanks, Alex. Um, as Alex said, our uh, properties are in the state of Nayarit, uh, Mexico. 
Uh, Nayarit's a good jurisdiction. Mexico itself is a very good jurisdiction. You can actually get mines permitted there. Uh, the two projects are about 148 kilometers apart. Um, international access, you can come in either through Mazatlan or uh, Puerto Vallarta. Um, the, the peak project is a typical uh, silver gold, low sulfidation epithermal system. Um, it has seen over uh, 31,000 meters of historic core drilling. Um, we have access to all that core. It's been kept in a secure warehouse this entire time. There are several historic uh, resource estimations uh, that have been done on the uh, project and uh, preliminary metal, metallurgical tests uh, indicate that we can get good uh, silver and gold recovery. So it's very important, I figure, if you can't get the metal out of the rock. It's just a rock and you walk from it as fast as you can. And we have a uh, large land package there. Um, as I said, it's located near the city of Topeka, about 22 kilometers away. Um, it's paved road all the way to the project, except for the last uh, three kilometers. Um, we've got a good uh, modern highway uh, system developed around us. Um, the one thing that uh, impressed me about this project when I first started looking at it was the, uh, the amount of alteration. It uh, just did not fit with the uh, 3.5 kilometers worth of structures that had been defined. It was a much bigger system than that. Um, we obtained a new map and immediately launched into a property-wide uh, um, exploration program. And to date, we've identified over 10 kilometers of uh, new veins, breaches, and uh, um, stock work zones. We've completed a uh, RC drilling program. I think we started that about a month after we achieved our listing. Um, the purpose of that program was to confirm the results of the previous core drilling, which it successfully did. Uh, we also intersected some uh, broad uh, bulk tonnage type zones that uh, had been overlooked in the previous drilling because they had not uh, analyzed their entire uh, core. Um, so I was very happy with that. The uh, existing resource estimation, um, it's open, a long strike. And in this case, it's open up dip. Um, this is the Dos Hornos one structure, um, our mapping that we're currently engaged in is uh, shown that it's over a kilometer long of additional undrilled uh, uh, potential. The uh, eastern portion of the project never received any uh, uh, work at all. Um, our initial reconnaissance found the uh, Taunus uh, structural set. It's about a kilometer and a half long now, and it contains historic mines, and we've had assay returns of up to uh, well over 600 grams of equivalent silver. Uh, the North Project area, again, received very little work. Um, our uh, work to date, we found, uh, um, again, over 600 grams in uh, outcrop. Um, we've initiated a large trenching program just recently. Um, I found this was very useful when I was with Prime as the COO there. Um, we started that because there had never been any real methodical surface trenching work, just as there hasn't been here. And uh, by the end of that program, uh, we started a new historic resource and, uh, or a new resource study. And the new estimation is well over a million ounces compared to 600,000 in the previous one. So trenching can be quite valuable. Uh, as I said, uh, the last uh, historic resource pegged it at a uh, little over 10 million ounces of silver. Uh, given the fact that we've uh, found a substantially large number of new uh, structures, um, our ongoing trenching program, I think that's all going to combine to uh, have a significant uh, increase in our, uh, our resource. The uh, metallurgy, as I said, uh, they've done um, traditional uh, bottle roll tests. These are pretty typical returns for the Sierra Madres. Uh, what I like to look at is the uh, combination flotation cyanide leaching. Uh, if we can get 90% silver recovery, uh, that's very significant since this is a silver rich system. So uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work in this area. 
Uh, La Tigra. Um, so like I said, we acquired this from uh, Grupo Mexico. I've kind of had my eye on this for a number of years. It's a uh, historic mining district. In the late 1800s, it was estimated there were 5,000 gold panners working this area. Um, our work to date has uh, shown us why there was a lot of gold panning there. Um, we've uh, the, currently the uh, there are some gambesinos working in the area, and they don't mine unless they can see it. So I've got really high hopes for this project. Uh, we've initiated our trenching program here. And as soon as we receive our uh, permits, we'll initiate a drilling program. And the plan here is to go back and forth between the projects. Um, that way we'll be able to do it, uh, say 15 holes, move to back to uh, the other project, do 15 there. And while we're getting the results to those 15 holes, we'll be able to then incorporate that into the next uh, program so that we're, we're never ahead of ourselves. I, I hate drilling holes without benefit of assay. You can waste a lot of money that way. So we'll be initiating that shortly. Alex? Perfect, thanks, Greg. Yeah, I'll quickly touch on the capital structure uh, of the company. Uh, we still have $12 million on hand. Uh, as Greg mentioned, we're gonna be heavily drilling kind of both projects this year and well into next year. Uh, we've budgeted between four and $5 million. Uh, we'll have two drill rigs uh, kind of in between the projects, both RC and Diamond. Uh, shares outstanding at just under 64 million shares, fully diluted 66 million. Uh, founders, management, that's myself, Greg, and a few others, we're actually well over 40%. Um, we've been actively buying the market. Uh, I bought 100,000 shares uh, this week alone. Uh, I should update that, yeah, we're closer to 43%. Uh, we have about 10 institutions uh, that are shareholders as well. Uh, they came in for relatively small amounts. Um, usually they come in for quite a bit more. Uh, when we did the IPO raise, we ended up raising 15 million. Uh, the order book was over 30. Um, these funds kind of came in with the expectation that they'd be able to uh, deploy more capital as our project events and as new acquisition possibilities arise. So um, we are well financed now, well capitalized, and if you know good opportunities or uh, come up, uh, we're able to kind of rely on those relationships to uh, to hopefully bring in more capital if needed. Um, yeah, so we're going to be busy um, over the next little while here. As Greg mentioned, we have a pretty thorough trenching campaign that's ongoing. Uh, so there'll be quite a bit of news flow coming. And then as soon as we're able to, uh, as soon as we get the results from that, we will start drilling. Uh, we're permitted for another 47 holes at Topeak. Uh, we're working on extending that and also going through permitting right now uh, at La Tigra. Uh, so thank you very much. Thanks everyone for your time. If you have any questions, uh, Greg and I will be happy to answer them.